So I'll do the remaining patch. Uh, so sewage treatment. Let's do today. So what is sewage basically? What do you know about the sewage? Can anybody define what do you, what do you mean by sewage? Huh? So uh, water is being used for various activities. So the adulterated water or the water which is mixed with uh, other components, dust, organic compounds, inorganic compounds. So the water which is suspended with the polluted materials are organic, inorganic materials that is called as sewage. We'll see in detail. So basically water, uh, sewage is a damaged or contaminated or polluted water. So water, let's see about the water first. Water is uh, required for the life and uh, water is being used at various uh, One so water is being used for various applications like domestic applications we use uh, uh, water at home for uh, uh, cooking drinking and various domestic applications and there is another application called a sanitary application Sanitary for uh, washing of utensils, clothes, and uh, taking a bath, and uh, different uh, washing of uh, uh, home or uh, toilets and other things. Uh, we use water, and water is also being used for the production, for uh, for beer production. Actually, huge amount of water is consumed for uh, beer production or any industrial product. If you want to produce, water is very much required. And water is also required for agriculture applications. For uh, the production of crops, uh, water is required in very larger amount. So uh, apart from that, we use water for uh, the plantations, not agriculture, but uh, gardening and other applications. So uh, in each and every application you name, whether it is a domestic application, just to, uh, if you are talking about domestic applications, if you are cooking the rice, so while cooking the rice, you will be straining some water from it. Oh, water plus starch will be coming out. This is a sewage, basically. So if uh, by different applications, if water gets something in it, if you are using for industrial application, then what happened? Industrial components will be joining into water. So this water added, uh, this uh, whatever the chemicals, added water is called a sewage basically it could be sometimes the leaves will be falling in the water there is a uh, pond over there so uh, in this pond water the leaves will be falling into it and uh, uh, the fishes will be releasing their excretory uh, materials so that is also a sewage due to entry of foreign bodies either it could be a physical uh, component or chemical component or biological component then the original properties of water is lost and then that is made into sewage. So in all these uh, applications, uh, the water, whatever it is created, it is unfit for the drinking purpose. It is, in fact, uh, it becomes so complex. Sometimes the plastic materials are released into the water, water bodies. Sometimes um, like... Uh, harsh chemicals heavy metals are released into the environment water bodies making it uh, making the water unfit for living organisms a lot of problems uh, are created because of uh, this kind of water that should be treated that water should be so uh, different uh, during the applications of uh, different uh, water applications some components will be added which makes unfit so uh, unfit in the sense it creates a lot of health issues it creates a lot of health is issues to man as well as his animals. Okay, so uh, even in industries also, a lot of uh, chemicals are added, as I told you, a uh, lot of solvents, oils, uh, like several components are added into it. 
based on the uh, broadly see i told you different forms but uh, broadly we can classify sanitary sewage manufacturing sewage as well as storm sewage sanitary sewage is anything that is uh, created by washing even domestic sewage is also added into sanitary sewage so whatever it is created by man and animal uh, his animals activity that is sanitary sewage manufacturing sewage any production and agriculture related whatever the water is uh, created see if something is added in water that is sewage and storm sewage due to heavy rains storms uh, and what happens water flows and uh, whatever the things are there tweaks uh, are uh, even sometimes uh, we might, might have seen the cars are floating in the uh, storm so all these things makes the storm sewage and there are different uh, like terminologies were given by different people but it is uh, well accepted this uh, three waste uh, uh, sewage is sanitary manufacturing and storm sewage it is uh, well accepted but uh, some people uh, like i told you in the beginning uh, domestic sewage sanitary sewage agriculture sewage and uh, production sewage like different uh, people have given different but this is overall uh, classification and uh, if what happens if this sewage is not treated if uh, this is not handled properly actually two third of the population problems now whatever we are facing that is because of uh, improper handling of this sewage two third is a very huge number 75% of the diseases or pollution related problems that we are facing today is because of improper or uh, and there's a not proper handling of this sewage so it is a alarming issue it is a very dangerous issue you know uh, in, in hyderabad ghmc handling of sewage in fact france germany they have um, bitted the courts that is that says the significance or importance of sewage treatment and uh, see it is a uh, wide distributed this uh, sewage is uh, see the hyderabad ghmc uh, area is wide distributed and uh, the collecting of the sewage from different sites and uh, handling it is a big task not only the sewage treatment what i mean to say is it's collecting and uh, uh, from different sources and putting it one pl uh, place is also a very big issue and if this is not handled properly then it, uh, it breeds mosquitoes uh, and it percolates into ground and it creates a lot of uh, pollution to the ground water you know um, a couple of uh, years back uh, if you remember uh, like uh, several coca cola pepsi they were reported to have e uh, edt um, because that uh, this coca cola pepsi these people they claim that they are using pure water pure, pure ground water even uh, the uh, kerala coconut uh, they have reported to contain edt traces even the milk uh, mother milk breast milk is also reported to have edt how because this uh, because, uh, even though edta has been uh, uh, banned the, it is percolated into the ground and uh, it is uh, it is being taken up by the plant and uh, so it is entering into the coconuts and uh, through the plants it is entering into the human being food chain that's what it is appeared in the milk also breast milk also so uh, in broad this uh, the sewage contains five major elements in it so organic matter uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and uh, suspended solids dissolved oxygen and fecal coliforms these are the five markers uh, very important markers to assess the quality of your uh, sewage organic matter organic matter you know it is a carbon based compounds it could be a protein it could be a carbohydrate it could be a nucleic acid or it could be a lipid or whatever maybe bio molecules mostly confers but apart from that uh, bio molecule there are several organic molecules uh, phenols uh, aromatic uh, lignin plant based lignins are also there in this uh, organic matter even dead cells are also contributes into the organic matter so overall if you take uh, sewage uh, the major contribution goes to this uh, organic matter it is a major contributor of uh, uh, pollution and uh, second is uh, uh, nitrogen phosphorus and you know nitrogen is also a, uh, is also coming through the proteins and uh, mostly organic nitrogen uh, organic nitrogen that is there in uh, that is there in the form of uh, 
DNA, RNA, proteins, and uh, some other biomolecules also it is contributing. Apart from that, there there are some inorganic uh, nitrogen also like ammonia, urea. Uh, uh, ammonia we can consider, and uh, there are other forms like nitrates. Nitrites are also there. So generally, uh, even phosphorus. Phosphorus are also organic and inorganic. Uh, inorganic actually. Triphosphates. Uh, triphosphates. This um, inorganic phosphorus is very much useful for the plant. See both nitrogen, free nitrogen, like uh, inorganic nitrogen, inorganic phosphorus. Both are very much required for the plant growth. So uh, if a sewage, if it is having rich of uh, inorganic uh, nitrate and inorganic phosphorus, more of microorganisms will grow over there. And uh, so it it help. And if the microorganisms are growing, it removes the organic matter as well as uh, uh, other other uh, pollutants also, other sewage materials also. That so the treatment will become easy. Sewage treatment will become easy. We'll see. That uh, means so suspended solid materials like uh, sometimes. <clears throat> few granular materials sometimes uh, bigger uh, stones kind of things are also maybe suspended in your water sometimes uh, what happened clogs may be formed uh, this uh, organic matter or uh, uh, some other materials they may be binding with one another to make a clog and this clog uh, makes a solid nature so and it will be suspended and uh, see the dissolved oxygen actually it is nothing to do with uh, sewage but uh, it is uh, very much required to assess the quality of sewage dissolved oxygen actually gets reduced when you are using uh, sewage as uh, the or this impurities increases like organic matter nitrogen phosphorus or other things as the increases then the dissolved oxygen gets reduced See, I told you uh, generally BOD biological oxygen demand will do will do uh, the zero one time will do the oxygen content how much it is there and you will give it some time then again we will do the estimation of uh, oxygen if the oxygen content is more reduced that indicates biologically active components like microorganisms are more in that case we will do the biological oxygen demand in the lab also so uh, second fecal coliforms. Uh, fecal coliforms uh, like Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli is an indicator organism for contamination from intestinal uh, sources. Like uh, E. coli, if E. coli is present in a particular water, if E. coli is present in a water body, that indicates that it is contaminated through human or animal fecal matter. Uh, and uh, that is unfit for the drinking purpose it is pakka sewage water and it should not be used for the drinking purpose so what are the objectives why we should do uh, that's a sewage treatment basically it is contaminated it is contaminated with several things uh, so wastewater or household water or uh, whatever kind of uh, sewage is there uh, it should be treated by physical chemical and biological process what by three methods we are supposed to do why we should do to make the environmental safe fluid that is a water if you are spreading into the environment see it's got a lot of nutrients lot of microorganisms will, will grow and uh, see it is coming in contact with human human activity generated uh, sewage is there so it got lot of microorganisms which has which have capacity to uh, disturb the human life so they will grow in very large quantity and they will create a lot of problem and another thing uh, not only killing this harmful microorganism, the other side is uh, we can use, uh, reuse uh, uh, some solid materials or uh, the disposable, whatever it is created out of it that can be uh, reused or either it may be incineration or organic manure or whatever the purpose. <clears throat> and uh, this, uh, the sewage uh, water, right? see two parts, solid as well as water will be creating. This water can be used for uh, some sort of safe works. And see, I told you one of the major problem in sewage treatment is collection of water, collection of sewage. So in bigger cities, uh, as uh, it is located in different points, collecting all the material at one point and doing and doing this sewage treatment is a big tough job. So what generally we'll do? Decentralization. 
decentralization in the sense individual see this is very much pop popular at our place for uh, septic tanks in villages in villages household individually will will construct a individual septic tank this biogas plant uh, septic tank septic tank is for toilets we'll be using and biogas plant also we are doing almost same concept it works aerobic uh, uh, this is uh, anaerobic digesters okay septic tank you know <clears throat> individually household uh, for uh, the sewage that is generated by individual household that will that is passed into the septic tank that is a constructed tank and there it is anaerobically digested it is anaerobically digested and we are not collecting uh, the gas generated over there that is not the purpose uh, there the main objective is to dispose the individual household that is a toilet based uh, waste that is generated it is passed into a deeper tank which is called a septic tank and uh, whatever the microbes are there uh, in that one they are disposed they are handled properly they are handled properly in this uh, septic tanks and uh, in case of uh, uh, municipalities or urban areas urban areas what happens each household they are having uh, their uh, toilet connections into ma main uh, pipeline and that pipeline takes it to a zone or local area it will be collected in hyderabad uh, we are having uh, a tank bund we are having a centralized uh, uh, sewage treatment plant you must have seen some time uh, there this uh, just back side to indira gandhi statue where this uh, sewage treatment plant is uh, located so uh, this centralized um, system we are having four phases in that one pre treatment primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment and even sometimes uh, scientists uh, consider pre treatment also under the part of primary treatment but actually we should consider them it as a separate one so let's see uh, the pre all these stages we'll discuss in brief first then we'll go into detail so pre treatment pre treatment see just based on the size and density separate size and shape and uh, density separation of uh, uh, easily removable things is not solubility here it is based on the size density and shape the bigger particles are heavier particles are easily removed in this first phase see if the water is flowing some stones are there some branches are there or some uh, tree logs are there suppose car is moving do you do direct pre treatment no generally will remove because it is a larger in size will remove it out isn't it so that is the pre treatment is concerned then the second stage uh, is a primary treatment in primary treatment actually uh, here is also we are separating based on the density but here soluble uh, components what are soluble components first pre treatment we are removing insoluble components uh, which are easily visible to us like bigger thing and uh, their shapes are different and they are denser so they will settle down so the settle down components are also removed here but they are insoluble pre treatment second one they are soluble but they are being separated based on their density like uh, they they will be allowed for uh, uh, like staying for some time so what happens here the soluble uh, soil or soluble mud will be settled down at the base and the oil and uh, oil and some like uh, low wet density containing cotton kind of thing they will be uh, thermocol will be floating at the top uh, so the top one oil and thermocol is removed and from the base heavy mud is removed so this is called as primary treatment and uh, next is secondary treatment basically secondary treatment is a biological pre treatment here by using the microorganisms biological processes we are doing see sedimentation has been completed in primary treatment itself once the suspend sedimentation is over your water is a more of a, a nutrient rich compound it is of more of a nutrient rich compound so this as the nutrients are more in that one we will be using that's a microorganism so both aerobic and anaerobic digestion process we will do in case of secondary treatment we'll go in detail uh, then the fourth phase is tertiary treatment once the biological uh, treatment that is the secondary treatment is over 
then we'll do uh, tertiary treatment in tre tertiary treatment fine refining of water will will be doing and uh, see some chlorination or sometimes again further uh, whatever uh, do uh, secondary treat tertiary like uh, uh, stabilization of uh, heavy metals or uh, whatever the heavy molecules are there that will be stabilized so uh, this is one more repetition step treatment is actually re uh, repetition step and uh, now it is released into the water bodies like uh, low flowing rivers coral reefs and lakes there, there it will be released now <clears throat> we'll come to the pre treatment first hope you understand four steps that is a uh, overall idea about the uh, pre treatment sorry uh, sewage treatment now we'll discuss uh, individual one pre treatment as i told you pre treatment is uh, removal of there's a particle removal of objects based on their size <coughs> shape and densities here three important steps are there stages are there in pre treatment for screening grit removal fat and greases removal see uh, sc screening screening is uh, actually you can see the screening uh, what to call filters this screening filters when the water is flowing through a tunnel when uh, or a canal when it is passing though in between the canal the screens are kept when the screens are kept whatever the particles which are objects which are having heavy size larger size or uh, those things cannot pass through it so from that area either uh, uh, individually or with uh, instrumentation you can remove those components that is about the screens second is glitters uh, gr grit chambers it is called as grid chamber basically uh, there are two i see here the water flow in between the water flow it will be having a circular uh, uh, it water will be passed through a circular chamber and uh, it is allowed to st uh, to stay for some time it is allowed to stay for some time so when it is staying what happens here the denser particles will be settled down and the lower particles will be staying up you can see in this in the picture so whatever the denser particles are there they will be removed from the base see the basically pre treatment job is insol removal of insoluble components so these insoluble co heavier components are removed from there and uh, the th third components removal of uh, what you call your uh, greases oils and uh, uh, thermocol sometimes cotton uh, floating materials so when uh, even in the grit itself when it is allowed for some time then from the top by using mechanical shredders it is called as mechanical shredders you can you can just remove whatever the top uh, most layer is there that can be removed easily so by this one three methods screens grit chambers and there's a uh, low density um, oils and uh, uh, fats removal almost primary screening is done which is called as pre pre treatment next goes to the primary treatment primary treatment sewage now it is free of uh, heavier particles stones and uh, oil larger extent oil is free but uh, you know just by uh, removing that the mechanical shredders uh, 100% oil cannot be removed so still some more oil is there in that case so what we'll do this a big this uh, whatever the pre treated sewage is there that is passed through the clarifiers or primary sedimentation tanks it is passed through the primary sedimentation tanks here is also sedimentation is being done sedimentation here it is uh, uh, in non first case based on the size mostly based on the size they are being separated and very few are, uh, compounds are separated based on see in case of pre treatment natural sedimentation is taking place here in case of primary treatment along with the natural there is a something called as influenced uh, sedimentation is also going on here and uh, if uh, something oil and, uh, and this uh, in greases are also that are also removed so these are the clarifiers are uh, 
primary uh, sewage uh, sedimentation tanks so here what happens here the the very big tanks water is uh, whatever the after pretreatment uh, whatever whatever the water comes that is uh, taken into the clarifiers are primary sedimentation tanks and uh, see sometimes the uh, temperature is uh, decreased low temperature you know that uh, sedimentation will be enhanced biomolecules uh, are macro molecules sedimentation will be enhanced if the temperature is reduced sometimes some by adding some chemicals uh, aerosol or aluminia by adding some chemical components its sedimentation will be enhanced sometimes by uh, biological compounds by you adding some biological compounds some mucus uh, my, uh, microorganisms mucus organisms then what happened the sedimentation rate will be enhanced so primary treatment will be enhanced it is not uh, we are not taking microorganisms as bio uh, component but it's a uh, mucus nature whatever its mucus nature is there, that is important for us so once they are settled down once they are settled down so you can see in the picture in the base uh, shafts are located they are rotating and uh, at the base of the shaft there is a tunnel here there is a tunnel what so what happens here whatever the uh, sedimented solid is there whatever the sedimented solid is there this shaft shifts its the whatever sedimented solid into the base tunnel and from the base tunnel the solid is removed so uh, in primary treatment in primary treatment the basic job is to remove the heavy uh, there's a denser particles more uh, more partic more of uh, non soluble components even if it is sol soluble it is coagulated and it is removed so water is made more free of sewage no uh, waste material now so scrapers uh, this uh, whatever uh, i told you these scrapers they will help to push your uh, material at the base and uh, through a centralized uh, pipe this uh, waste is collected out and uh, is uh, treated separately and uh, the water which is remaining at the top that is treated separately and the grease and oil uh, which are floating at the top that also sometimes recovered and used uh, uh, for the saponification that soap preparation purpose secondary treatment actually secondary treatment is uh, of more important actually uh, in first two pre treatment as well as primary treatment our objective is uh, not of destroying anything just separating based on the physical properties but here secondary treatment is important to make it uh, hazardous free it is uh, hazardous free so uh, after doing the primary treatment still the microorganism lot of heavy metals lot of uh, there is a chemical waste materials are still remaining in your sewage so that will do uh, the treatment by secondary treatment process we will try to reduce all this microbial load chemical load and uh, the nutrients are also present in it so what to, what do we need to do here this here generally uh, most common practice that what we do in secondary treatment is aerobic uh, biological process okay uh which requires the oxygen so this secondary treatment basically two major com two major methods were reported fixed in uh, fixed in film method that uh, that is called as attached growth uh, containing mostly the popular one is here trickling filters trickling filters is very common uh, in this case and uh, rotating biological contractors are also there these two methods in fact uh, in uh, hyderabad uh, in our uh, as a sewage treatment plant at uh, as a hyderabad we are having rotating biological uh, conductors that uh, you can see some sometime i will show you the images also and second method secondary treatment is done by two methods one is fixed film method so here what happened the microorganisms are fixed attached to some uh, source it is attached to some source and that sources are being used for the pre treatment for treatment second one suspended growth microorganisms are not attached to some point directly they are released into uh, your sewage and they will do see which is more economical 
fixed film is more economical suspended growth every time you need to add uh, the microbial uh, load over there whereas if it is a fixed film that will be more uh, important we'll see one by one here film filters in fixed film fixed film category it is uh, trickling filters are very important here uh, trickling filters requires lot of space and this is the one which is being uh, predominantly used this is very much used even though space is required see here aerated uh, the water is passed and from the base i will enlarge this picture i'll show you see here uh, this uh, effluent is coming from one side and this is a dome and uh, this is a dome this this particular dome uh, and the water is passed and from the bases see the water is passed from here and the air is also passed here so the water plus air is lot of oxygen is through a water lot of oxygen is provided to the sewage that is being treated over there so the aerobic microorganisms will will take that uh a oxygen which is coming along with the water and they will be doing oxidation process they will be doing the oxidation process and uh, they will be doing the breakdown of uh whatever the heavy met, uh, whatever pollutants are there their breakdown will be carried out by the microorganisms biological oxidations will be taking place in this case and sometimes for promoting of the microorganisms some media nutrient media is also like when you are starting a trickling filter that the microbes are grown in the media then uh, once the microorganisms are enriched then the sewage is passed through it and uh, it is treated but uh, subsequently once uh, the microorganisms are enriched in that one uh, subsequent addition of media is not required this is a trickling filter this is the same thing that the detailed flow if you take see uh, here uh, the microorganisms are packed in uh, what to call this uh, small beads kind of things see these are the small beads kind of things so what happens here uh, here air plus uh, from here oxygen and this air is passed here from here water is passed so the microorganisms will be growing on these beads lot of microorganisms will be growing this is i told you this film fixed one this category is film fixed one and uh, uh when the sewage is being passed through it then it will be doing the oxidation uh, biological oxidation of sewage uh, whatever the macro molecules are there they will be digested and uh, the whatever the waste is there then uh, it's a waste material is there that will be separated and the water is separated this is a magnified uh, image of the last image now uh, the second quality uh, in uh, film there is attached film category rotating biological contractors here you can see here this is a uh, influent that is a primary treated sewage will be passing through it and uh, here these are the contractors basically the objective of contractors is to increase the surface area see I, here it will be rotating as they, they are keeping on rotating see the surface uh, they goes at the base and they takes the uh, what you call sewage and they comes out once they comes out they are they are exposed to the atmosphere for a very longer period so oxygen is very much available for it oxygen is very much available for it then it uh, takes it to the secondary uh, clarifier where uh, the settlement of uh, heavier materials will be taking place then the effluent will be going out so maximum part of uh, biological compounds degradation is taking place by but uh, this uh, shafts or uh, the contractors will be rotating very high and uh, which makes the material to be degraded fast uh this is how uh, the material degradation uh, concept is concerned uh, the cells will be developed see one cell will made into many cells basically they are uh, slime uh, slimy layers so they are having mucus cells and uh, where uh, they will be degrading the bio compounds to produce ammonia carbon dioxide and water and uh, they they takes the nutrients from that uh, sewage uh, by absorption process and they digest it and they will release the ammonia and carbon dioxide which will be released into the atmosphere this is the uh, pathway of uh, uh, this is in fact uh, our nicholas road is also being practiced by this method
uh, after the primary treatment uh, it is passed through, it is, uh, after it is passed through it so 40% of uh, this uh, rotating bi uh, biological contractors will be dipped into the sewage and uh, when it is rotating then it gets uh, the sewage comes at the top then it is exposed see microorganisms are there uh, attached over the rotating biological contractors so the microorganisms uh, along with the air will be coming in exposed with the sewage so they will be doing efficient sewage treatment then subsequently it is uh, allowed for the uh, secondary clarifications that is clarification is nothing but sedimentation so once the, the it is sedimented then the sedimented particles are uh, treated separately and uh, the liquid which comes in the supernatant uh, that will be treated separately now uh, the solidified material see we are getting the sol uh, this uh, sludge the solid material we are getting in primary sewage treatment as well as secondary uh, sewage treatment in both the cases you are getting the sludge this sludge uh, so sludge is a solid material it is uh, treated by aerobical as well as anaerobic uh, process this uh, activated sludge treatment is concerned uh, it requires uh, it is an aerobic process it requires uh, oxygen and uh, here what happened lot of microorganisms will be growing in the presence of oxygen and uh, it will uh, see whatever the image that i have shown you one second just Okay, this uh, activated sludge uh, treatment, whatever the solids that comes through the primary and the secondary sewage treatment, they will be treated with uh, microorganisms in aerobic conditions. They will be treated in the aerobic conditions and uh, even this is also, let's see, this is activated uh, sludge. Uh, why it is called as activated sludge uh, treatment? Because activated sludge, the uh, sludge are uh, the the sewage which got huge number of microorganisms. See, this is a uh, clarifier. Where do we get this clarifier? In the primary uh, sewage treatment. So, this whatever the waste that you are getting, the water is removed from here, and uh, this is a uh, already treated um, sewage. So, a lot of microorganisms will be growing in this one. So, some of uh, this uh, sewage which got huge number of microorganisms will be passed into this sludge part the solid uh, removal part we can say in microbiology it is inoculation this is a grown culture heavy uh, microorganisms are there in this case so this heavy microorganisms containing part from this one little amount will be inoculated into the uh, see this is basically primary treatment in primary treatment the uh, after the sedimentation water is removed otherwise this solid is removed and wherever you remove in that one you will be adding the what there's a see this is a treated one so microorganisms uh, that's a microorganism rich sewage or treated sewage will be added to the uh, sludge so it is, it is called as activated sludge treatment now there is a one more process lagoons lagoons uh, see sewage is there after the uh, there is a secondary treatment after the secondary treatment that uh, it is uh, that uh, sewage that comes out from that uh, secondary treatment it is passed through the lagoons lagoons are small uh, ponds kind of things where the uh, stream flow the water flow is very less or it is it may be a stagnant kind of thing 
so what happens here different zones are created as uh, the stream flow is very less or the water flow is not there then it will be made into different zones like aerobic zone facultative zone and anaerobic zones and in the top because sunlight exposure is there and a lot of oxygen uh, is moving what happens here photosynthetic aerobic bacteria will grow or plants will grow or phytoplankton will grow on the top and uh, so what happens here as the dissolved oxygen is high uh, at the top layer aerobic bacteria even though if at all uh, little amount of uh, uh, waste is remaining in that area maybe some nutrients uh, uh, remaining there some glucose may be coming not uh, direct glucose um, cellulose or something may be coming so that there will be aerobic bacteria will be removing those things and the facultative zone uh, is the area where some bacteria like uh, in the presence or absence they can survive such kind of bacteria will survive in their care and at the last uh, we will be having anaerobic bacteria uh, like mostly uh, macromolecular uh, starch digestive bacteria cellulose digestive bacteria mostly they are anaerobics and they will be there in the base and these anaerobic bacteria are responsible to make the uh, sludge the liquid or the solidified material will be formed over there and uh, this uh, so uh, here what happens here in this lagoons the uh, sewage is being added from the influent channel see from here your waste uh, the secondary treated uh, sewage is added from here and it comes and makes into three zones and actually this is called as lagoon lagoon is nothing but a small pond uh, by different making different zones it helps in the sewage treatment this is surface aerated basin so this is a lagoon treatment only it's a then oxidation plan if you want to enhance further uh, there's a degradation there's a, if you want to further enhance the sewage treatment process then oxidation ponds are preferred see the difference in between lagoons and ponds are lagoons are natural uh, ponds where uh, with the natural air flowing in the top uh, oxidation is uh, carried out and uh, it 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 will help in the oxidation of biomolecules and uh, decomposition of uh, biomolecules whereas oxidation ponds it is assisted by added oxygen you can see here uh, the oxygen uh, see the air sprinklers air water and air sprinkles uh, through it you can see i think uh, prawn uh, ponds fishery ponds are also having similar kind of things uh, so here what happens here due to this oxidation process a uh, lot of uh, see anaerobic process also do the digestion but it is a very slow process but the uh, oxidation process is a bit fast process so to further enhance it uh, this uh, oxidation ponds will be supported with the uh, added oxygen so that uh, improved oxidation and the decomposition will be taking place this uh, biological aerated filters there's a uh, trickling filters biological uh, there's a rotating biological contractors we discussed about uh, these issues and uh, after this uh, secondary treatment what happened see secondary is a very complex process secondary primary treatment is just sedimentation it could be a uh, temperature added one or could be a chemical added one or could be a biological uh, compound added one whatever maybe secondary treatment is a microbial uh, process it is uh, basically two methods are involved in that one one is uh, there is a attached one or it could be a free one attached one the clean filters are there and bio uh, biological rotators are there and uh, this uh, free compounds see the trickling filters we have seen trickling uh, in case of trickling filters uh, some beads like your uh, immobilized beads we will be taking the beads and uh, the air and the water is passed uh, over there and over it the sewage is passed then in the presence of sewage and uh, the nutrients of uh, sewage plus the oxygen and water uh, the decomposition of um, the sewage will be taking place by the with the help of microorganisms that is uh, in case of trickling filters in case of membrane uh, rotators what happens here the uh, this drums kind of structures are arranged uh, which will increase the surface area and the microorganisms are attached over this uh, drum uh, drums so when they are circulating see for any time 40% uh, sewage is uh, 
uh, coming in contact uh, like uh, drums 40% of the drums are uh, depth, like they are uh, uh, in uh, sewage so as they are rotating what happens your the the sewage will be coming in contact uh, thin uh, sewage layers will be formed and the oxygen and uh, there is a microorganisms will be coming in contact uh, so that easy decomposition will be taking place then well, after uh, then the, the uh, soluble one soluble one uh, sludge treatment there is a activated sludge treatment what we will do there is a treated inoculum treated sewage little amount of treated sewage will be passing into the fresh sewage then because more number of microorganisms are coming in contact with the fresh sewage it will be doing a rapid and easy pre treatment treatment sorry then once this phases biological phases are over now we will do a secondary sedimentation here uh, after the secondary treatment there is a membrane it could be attached or free whatever mode then it is allowed to uh, in a secondary sedimentation tanks it is passed and then it is uh, either it is filtered or it is flocculated flocculated in the sense by adding some uh, substances it is made to uh, attach one by uh, one to one and make a flock flock will be generally uh, floating at the top okay then this uh, either it is a top floated or uh, sedimented materials they are removed and then finally it is uh, tertiary treatment is taking place majority of the time you know uh, tertiary treatment based on the requirement of water if the water if you have surplus secondary this tertiary treatment is uh, not that much required but uh, uh, quality requirements are concerned we are supposed to go for the tertiary treatment and after the tertiary treatment water is released into the sea river we'll see uh, what will it do in the uh, this is a tertiary treatment tertiary treatment can also be called as a effluent polishing it is a finishing finishing step that's what we call it as a finishing uh, of effluent so what we'll do here filtration membrane filtration or uh, like uh, membrane filtration so are there there's a big uh, art, um, machinery based uh, uh, tangential membrane filters will be there through the so that already that's a um, tertiary secondary sorry secondary treated uh, sewage will be passed and uh, so that uh, if any particulate matter is there or any uh, flocks or precipitates are there they can be removed lagooning uh, lagooning not only in that uh, secondary treatment if it is done in tertiary treatment also like more efficient of uh, uh, see lagooning basically wherever the oxidation is taking place then the nutrients of uh, the sewage are removed so here in nutrient removal also see we grow generally organic materials uh, can be removed easily by microorganisms because they do decomposition of it but inorganic nutrients inorganic like uh, we discussed about uh, uh, nitrates uh, and uh, phosphorus and different kind of uh, inorganic materials they should be removed the algae is the best source to remove the nutrient uh, from that disinfection see uh, e coli is there and maybe some other microorganisms and even protozoans must be there in your sewage so they should be see whatever primary secondary tertiary treatments that you did so, uh, this uh, microorganisms may not be affected that much so the best uh, provided option is to disinf to do disinfectant better to do some sort of uh, uh, chlorination ozonation and uh, this actually they the supports a lot ozone uh, is very effective it, it may be a um, bit cost effective uh, co uh, costly but it is a uh, very much effective but uh, nowadays uh, the chlorine is very much uh, preferred generally uh, once uh, the water is uh, uh, flocculated or once uh, the solid material is removed from it it is under undergoes uh, the chlorination so once it is uh, chlorinated what happens uh, that uh, the microbial load that the hazard the microbial hazardness is reduced then the odor control see uh, despite of tertiary treatment also the sewage because of uh, some sort of chemicals in it, it still it will be having the odor there's a that odor should be removed there are several methods 
it's a very common and um, see the spraying of uh, ferric chloride if you spray, uh, spray the ferric chloride hydrogen sulfide binds with the ferrous uh, chloride to make ferrous sulfide and uh, some extent the hydrogen sulfide smell is removed but uh, like uh, by doing the biological treatment and by using the sometimes uh, sprays and other things the uh, will try to re uh, reduce the odor then the sludge whatever the sludge uh, sludge is uh, the solid material which gets sedimented and it's a treatment we need to do that 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 is done in the uh, tertiary and uh, is uh, sludge is treated by anaerobic digestion and uh, aerobic digestion anaerobic digestion uh, we do uh, for the like so, suppose uh, you we require some gas production out of it biogas or something in such cases uh, anaerobic process uh, is preferred aerobic di uh, digestion generally whenever you if you plan to prepare a manure out of it then the aerobic digestion is um, prepared and the composting composting is a process uh, see sludge uh, after the aerobic and anaerobic treatment or along with the aerobic and anaerobic treatment if is added with wood chips or uh, uh, some other materials so that uh, that's whatever the a water content is there it is released uh, reduced and it can be used as a compost that process is called as composting incineration is burning out if uh, your sewage is having lot of hazardous uh, materials in it uh, so most preferable method is incineration and uh, sludge disposal uh, sometimes land fillings uh, wherever uh, if you have any uh, the pits are uh, something uh, sometimes uh, um, you need to fill those uh, gaps then generally we will prefer the it is called as uh, uh, sludge disposal or uh, filling the pits these are the anaerobic uh, treatments as uh, sludge digesters and uh, here just these are like your biogas plants aerobic digestion and the composting as i told you will be adding into the uh, whatever the sludge is created or uh, the solid sludge is created in that one you will be adding sawdust straw wood chips uh, and uh, then the partial digestion will be taking place aerobic digestion will be taking place then it is used as a organic manure incineration incineration is just a, see uh, we'll take the lamina uh, inoculation loop and burn it in on the um, in lamina uh, the um, bunsen burner similar thing direct burning of uh, any organic material is called as incineration this is a sewage uh, layout of sewage treatment plant the how it will be taking place see first this is a sewage which is created and uh, it is collected uh, by some means and it is pretreated in pretreatment basically the objective is removing the bigger and uh, heavier molecules and uh, is uh, this removed the heavy molecules that has come and they are removed and then it goes to the primary treatment primary treatment uh, basically it is a tanks primary uh, tanks and uh, here there is a craft which separates the solid material here see here the craft removes the solid material and uh, whatever the liquid is there after the sedimentation whatever the liquid remaining that goes to the aeration tanks aeration tanks and uh, from there again it goes to the secondary treatment plant secondary treatment basically secondary treatment is a biological treatment process secondary treatment is two basically two types one is film based one is suspension based film based trickling filters and uh, third one is rotators based shaft rotators based so in these see in both the things the concept is providing oxygen and uh, water to the microorganisms along with the nutrients of sewage so that uh, this microorganisms will do the treatment and uh, after the secondary treatment again will uh, pass through the sedimentation tanks then the solid is removed again this solid and the solids coming from this here then uh, you will be doing the sludge digestion and that is by the aerobic or anaerobic process then this sludge further this is uh, dried and then dry sludge uh, finishing and uh, this is useful for the this uh, biogas production process this is also the same thing this is a primary treatment this is secondary treatment and this is a tertiary treatment this is about uh, sewage treatment is concerned so 
I'll be happy uh, to answer if you have any queries. Hello? Yeah, tell me if you have any doubts, I'll be happy to answer one or two. Then we'll conclude. 